screen. Here we go. I think I let everybody in. All right. So good afternoon. Happy July 1st to everybody. And uh, an early happy Independence Day weekend to everyone, to all of our attendees. My name is Rob Romanowski. I am the uh, Director of Sales Operations with 3HTI. And today, our webinar, we're going to look at Cre the additive manufacturing capabilities within Creo 8. And our guide, our Sherpa for the day will be, uh, for the webinar will be Paul Dye, Applications Engineer out of uh, the area of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. So uh, I am on the other side of the state, outside of Philadelphia. And uh, we're glad to have everyone on today. So if you have any questions during the webinar, feel free to type those in the dashboard. Uh, we'll definitely answer those at the end or by the end. We'll try to answer them as we get them. And hopefully this is going to be about 15, 20 minutes. Uh, Paul's going to do an overview and then get into the demo. So without further ado, Paul, I, am, I have stopped sharing and now you can have the con. All right. Sounds good. This I is your... It. Sherpa coming on. So thank you very much, Rob. And again, my name is Paul Dye. I'm a technical specialist here at PTC. And last week we ran an overview webinar on really everything that's new within Creo 8. So what we wanted to do this week and actually in some of the coming weeks was focus in on more of these particular areas give a little bit more of an in-depth overview over the, each of the sections and then show a brief demonstration of what some of these different tools look like within the context of Creo. So that's what we're going to do today is mainly go into what we have around our new added manufacturing capabilities. And this is all going to be specific to Creo 8. So over the past couple of releases of Creo, Creo 7, 6, 5, we've steadily been putting a lot of effort into specifically additive manufacturing and including a lot of new functionality and I'm not going to go over all that today because that would be an hour webinar in and of itself but we just want to focus more in particular onto our creo 8 release if you are interested in any of those other releases we have data sheets that we could send you but without further ado we can go ahead and get started i'm going to go do just a brief overview over some of these different capabilities and then show specifically what a couple of them look like in the context of creo All right, so first thing that I want to focus in here is on simulation driven lattices. So this is really combining our design for added manufacturing with our emerging technology that we see around simulation driven design. So with Creo 8, we're really taking this to the next level by introducing this idea of simulation driven lattices. So this is something now users can leverage their simulation results that you're getting from Creo Simulation Live, as well as Creo Simulate as an input into our lattice creation. So essentially, that means wherever we see high stress points in the model or low stress points in the model based on the analysis that we're running, the system will vary the density of the lattices in those particular areas. So if there's high stress in an area, it will beef up the lattice and make it stronger. And if there's areas of very low stress, it will lower down the density and make it a little bit more sparse in those areas where it's not needed. So it's really allowing you to optimize your design to your different engineering goals, whatever those might be and just allow you to get more uniform stress distribution overall in the models. And this is what we'll focus in on in the demonstration itself. But I wanna focus and review some of these other areas. So from there, we're now able to support solid representation for stochastic lattices. These are the randomized kind of ball and beam structures that and we put a lot of time and effort into building out over the last couple of releases of Creo. They have a lot of great uses, especially in the medical field, if you're building out bone graphs or anything like that really useful there. And now going forward, we're able to build solid representations of that geometry. And in addition to that, we also replace the algorithm that we use in some of our formula driven lattices. So if you see here, gyroids, for example, these will actually now leverage the same engine that we use in our generative design studies. So that same engine is used here to build our gyroid lattices. So what we're able to do here is not only build out that resulting lattice, but now with that actually create bodies for the two complementary areas that were created in the negative space where that lattice is not located. So you take an area, you build out the lattice and a certain area is removed, but now we're actually able to take those areas that were removed. So inside of that space, we're creating 
two completely separate bodies that are then entwined within each other. So based on the lattice, it would create these two different bodies that wouldn't overlap at all, but this can be very useful. And why is that? Well, with that, you're able to create, for example, a very highly efficient heat exchanger. So the final lattice that we, you would have would be in the middle of that. And then you have these two different bodies that could contain two different fluids. You could have one hot fluid, one cold fluid in those two respective bodies. And then the volumes that could then be used studied for different thermal properties, fluid flow analysis. So really, honestly, awesome use of that type of technology there. And lastly here, we're also now able to selectively remove dangling beams that may have been created from a lattice. If you create an, a lattice and at the end of one of those beams, you would have it exposed to open air. It's just not attached to anything. You can now go through and selectively remove those if, if that's necessary. And before that you move into the demonstration, there's actually um, another brief slide that I wanted to hit on here as well. Go ahead and pull that up here too. So before we move into that, there's also a brief area that I wanted to touch on here, and that is around our specifically improvements to the build direction optimization. So this is something that we've had in Creo, but something that we improved, something that we introduced back in Creo 6 as a tool to help you analyze and optimize the orientation of your part for printing purposes, whether that be for minimizing the number of support structures, optimizing it to put more components, or even reducing the build time. It's a very useful tool in the context of additive manufacturing. And previously, you're able to optimize for just one of those optimizations. But now what we can do is optimize against all of them simultaneously. You can give a weighting or a percentage to each of those, and it'll optimize based upon that. And from there, we can see we also enhance the tray assembly itself for adding in multiple components. So that means during the assembly process, as you're adding volumes to the tray assembly, you can now say how many components you want to add all within one step. So starting to streamline that process a bit. So whereas previously, you would have had to add a component, then pattern it out. You can now specify whether you want five or 10 or however many components that you want all within that one step. All right, so from there, we can go ahead into the demonstration. So this is gonna be specifically around our simulation driven lattices here. And again, if there's any questions, anything that you need me to elaborate more on, definitely feel free to drop those in and we can definitely get to that as well. But we can go ahead and get started here. So go ahead and get our data set open that we're going to be working with here. So again, we're going to be focusing in specifically on lattice density and that variability. And what we want to use is our simulation or FEA results to drive that variability. So in this case, we're going to utilize Creo Simulation Live to do some real time structural simulation. You can see I have a few different parameters set up here. So the first thing you can see is some constraints down at the bottom, wherever that model might be mounted or attached. And then up in the middle, we have a moment applied on that inner surface of the model. And that's really all about really basically everything we need to define the study. We do have some options to focus on speed or accuracy. But with that laid out, all we need to do with Career Simulation Live is click the simulate. And we can see pretty much as soon as we click to run that simulation, we have our results back. And then from that point, we can go ahead and check out some of the results that we got back. So first thing we could take a look at is our Vimesi stress. With that, you could change the rendering method, change any of the units that you need to there. You could also highlight on the model to see exactly where those maximums would be occurring. And in this case here, we can see right now it's down at the point where it's going to be mounted. And in our case, that's a pretty critical area. So we definitely need to do something to maybe distribute that stress a bit better throughout the model. We could also take a look at how much deformation we're getting. And in this case, it seems to be occurring around where we thought it would be up at the top, but right now it's at that internal surface. So again, we'd like to spread that out maybe towards the outside if we could. We could also animate on that deformation to see if the deformation makes sense depending on how we set up the study. But now what we want to do is take some of the results that we got here from the study and export them out. So what we're going to do here is probe out a certain amount of points that we have in the model from our analysis. It's taking into account things like Bamisi stresses, deformation. And what we want to do now is use those values to drive the variability or the density of our lattices based on those simulation results. And this is really what we mean when we say simulation driven design. We're able to incorporate our findings here in the analysis actually drive the features that we're creating 
And in this case, we want to take advantage of the additive manufacturing capabilities that we have here within Creo for creating some geometry that just simply wouldn't be possible to create using other manufacturing methods. So we can go ahead and jump into our lattice feature here. There's a lot of functionality. And in my case, I want to maintain the current surface that we're working with. So first thing we'll do is tell Creo to keep a two millimeter shell on the outside. And then from here, we can select our cell type, change the cell size in any direction, then define our cell fill. In this case, I'll use a star configuration and then go through and change any parameters regarding ball or beam structure that we're using. And now from this point, we can bring in the simulation results to drive the density of our lattice. So in the past, maybe we would have tried to do this manually. We would have tried creating geometry that follows along the stress paths that we saw, do that to define the density. But now we can actually make direct use of that analysis to really automate that process here in our additive manufacturing features. You see here, once we have that defined, we can go ahead and get a preview of what that lattice is going to look like or how it was built out. And now we could take a minute to review the model, see what that preview looks like, if we like it or not. And if we do, we can go ahead and accept it and build it right into the model. Again, this is some fairly complex geometry, but over the past couple of releases of Creo, we've really optimized that system to build out those features much faster. You see it's already done. So we can take a cross section of that model to get a better view of what that looks like. So it's hard to see a little bit in this case, but in any areas that there were lower stresses, we'll see a lower cell density. And in any areas of higher stress, we'll see that density increase. What we, what we could really do here is now jump back into Creo Simulation Live, go ahead and rerun that simulation. We can see what type of effect that our lattice had on the distribution of stress throughout the model. And again, we immediately have access to those results. So here we can see what type of stresses that we're seeing, where they're located. We can go ahead and check out through the model. And again, we're not really seeing this uh, sharp spikes anymore, especially down in any critical areas, down around our mounting holes. We've been able to move those to different points of the model. And so that's another thing to notice. Uh, again, these lattices, they're not just nice to look at, right? They're fully functional 3D geometry. It works well in our analysis. We could take what we're seeing here, keep refining the model, keep working out more of that stress. And again, from here, we could go through, check out some of our other values. Seems like our deformation is located around the same place, but in our case here, it's actually moved to the outside surface of the model. So again, a definite uh, right step in the right direction. And another thing that we were able to change throughout this as well was how much material that we actually utilized to get here. So the lattice was able to reduce the weight of the part, still maintaining the structural integrity. So overall, we made our model much more efficient. And that's really all possible due to our variable density lattice. So Creo was able to take those analysis results that we got from our study, we used it to improve the design of our part. So again, that's very powerful, and very useful tools that we have there, all utilizing what we have in our additive manufacturing capabilities. All right, so that covers everything that I wanted to show for today. Again, we just want to make sure that we we're hitting everything at a high level, showing everything that you would see within that process, but some awesome capabilities and some things that users in Creo are really starting to get some great use out of. So with that, if we have any questions, we can go ahead and take those now. And overall, we can pass it back over now to you, Rob, and we can start to wrap up. Sounds good. Nicely done, Paul. Uh, so what I want to get to, let me share my screen real quick. So if you, if you have any questions, type them in. Um, and if any of our panelists have anything they'd like to add, feel free to feel free to speak. Um, I think this is good that we have everything wrapped up in about 15 minutes. Um, but just just to let our customers know who are on the line, um, we we give two hours of desk side coaching to our customers. If you have one license for every license that you have, you get one hour of desk side coaching, but we'll provide a minimum of two hours of desk side coaching. So that means that whatever you're modeling, whatever you're, um, you may be struggling with from a design engineering or even an analysis standpoint, manufacturing, um, we're more than happy to, you know, get on the phone with you uh, via Zoom and just help work out whatever issues there are, share our expertise with you to uh, help you become more proficient at using Creo or other PTC tools like Windchill. Um, we're more than happy to, uh, to assist you in, in that regard. So feel free to just respond to the emails 
that uh, that I sent out regarding this webinar, um, and we could set up a session for you. Or you could contact me directly, or you can email us at info at 3hti.com, or call us toll-free at 866-624-3hti. So that is going to wrap it up for the webinar today. The recording is going to be on uh, YouTube. I'm going to have that uploaded, and we'll have the link sent out to everybody. So, Paul, thank you very much. Uh, appreciate your going into more things than I need to. Uh, appreciate your help and assistance. And next week, I believe our webinar at noon is going to talk about model-based definitions. So uh, we look forward to hosting you guys next week. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Paul, thank you, and happy Independence Day to everyone else. Take care, everyone.